Hello everyone and welcome back and um, today we're gonna be taking a look at creating mushrooms that's right mushrooms in blender it's a lot of fun so let's dive in and um, it is fall we got a lot of falling leaves and we got mushrooms popping up as well and um, so we may as well create some cool mushrooms or at least let's just dive into a way to create mushrooms and um, so I'm just gonna be modeling this time um, and so it's not gonna be geometry node related so we're gonna delete this cube delete shift a mesh and we can start off with a very simple circle and right away at the bottom left we have a window where we can actually specify how many vertices we want and remember we can always add a subdivision but um removing geometry is always a little bit trickier i suppose so i'm going to set my vertices to maybe eight eight for now there we go and we can actually extrude this now going to edit mode press two edge select and press numpad one and let's just extrude our mushroom up like that. And it doesn't have to be perfect, right? Nature is not perfect. We can just extrude this. And let's just create a more of a low poly version for now. Extrude this into a beautiful direction that we think the mushroom would go in. There we go. And this is going to be our stem. Okay, so this is our stem. We can just rename that with F2. Stem. Beautiful. And then we're going to create the actual cap. So to do that, we can add a new mesh, shift A mesh um, circle, and I'm gonna create a new mesh because I just want to have some freedom in modeling this, this cap, right? And as long as we work from the same amount of base vertices, we can connect this very easily later on. So what I wanna do now is I actually wanna create some of those, um, well, let's create the cap first, I suppose. So let's actually create um, a new extrusion in edit mode, press E. And Z, and there we go. Extrude this up. Uh, e S Z E S Z. Um, no, just S, I guess. There we go. Um, and we want to extrude this in a way that we can actually create a mushroom. So press E S and Z E S and Z, something like that. E S and Z, and let's actually move this back up. E S and Z and E Z S. E Z. We're gonna close this actual mesh, right? That's what I'm trying to do here. E S Z E S. There we go. So to connect this now, we can just press F3 and grid fill, right? That's usually the simplest way of um, connecting this up, right? We can play around with the span if we want, but one is fine. Um, or what do we have? Two, I think. Yeah. There we go. So this will be our mushroom shape already. Quite easy, right? And let's right away start worrying about how we create that inner part here. The part that usually looks the most organic. Um, to do that, we need more geometry. And we need, <coughs> we need a modifier. So let's just duplicate this. And let's select this, 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 and this. There. And let's press Ctrl I and delete bases. So we only have that bottom part. And we can actually start worrying about that displacement now. So let's add a few edge loops. Um, or let's just subdivide this, right? Why not? Subdivision surface. Set this to two or maybe even three. We need a lot of geometry. Press Ctrl A, right mouse, shade smooth. Or actually, we don't need to apply that. We can just add a new modifier and find a displace modifier. Hit new. And we want a texture to be, let's say, magic. I'm not gonna do that here actually. Let's delete our modifier. Let's go to the Geometry Nodes Editor. I want a more specific kind of displacement. So go to Geometry Nodes Editor, hit New, and hit Shift A, Set Position, and zoom in a little bit. There we go. So the offset is going to be based on, let's say, a wave texture now. And that wave texture, Ctrl T, um, it's not working, <laughs> the vector of that wave texture. And um, we want this to be based on a gradient texture. So gradient texture. And I want this to be radial, I guess. And to offset this properly, we can hit Shift A, combine X, Y, Z, and crank this into the Z value. And there we go. We already get some cool movements there. Um, and now we can actually add a little bit of distortion as well. Let's make everything a bit more random. And let's find a bit more of that randomization as well. Something like that. And we, then we're going to hit Shift A and find the vector math. And hit Add or Multiply. We'll see later. Drag that out to a noise texture. And then we can actually uncheck Normalize and connect the color. 
and we can already work with that. So let's down the scale a little bit, even more, even more. So it's more supple. There we go. Add a bit more roughness. Beautiful. Right now, shade smooth. Let's see how it looks like that. Um, not perfect yet. Um, perhaps we need more geo or four. That looks better. Um, so let's actually set our detail here to zero and the distortion as well. There we go. That looks better already. And then let's scale this up a tiny bit. There we go. And what we can do then is I want to shift a vector math. I want to scale this entire noise texture down just a little bit so it's not that strong. And we can up the scaling with shift slightly like that. Beautiful. I think that looks a lot better already. So then for a wave texture, now we can play around with the scaling perhaps. Let's make it a bit bigger. And perhaps even shift a, a color ramp and drag everything a bit closer so it does have more of that offset going on. All right, that looks quite cool. Um, let's set this to constant and see how that looks. I think that looks quite nice as well, but let's just go with ease. There we go. So that already looks quite nice. So this works, um, but we want this to combine it with our actual mushroom shape. Um, <coughs> excuse me. So to do that, we need to somehow only have that movement um, in the segment in the middle, but then at the edge it should get more rounded again, and here at the bottom as well. Um, so we want to actually add a bit of a weight paint that pretty much gives an input of where this displacement should happen. And we can do that by going into edit mode and going to do the data tab, hit plus, vertex group, call this disp for displacement, and let's select this edge here, double click at the inner edge, and let's go with assign. There we go. Then go out of edit mode. Here in geo mode, hit shift A, attribute, named attribute, and find disp. And then we can actually use this to control the offset. So hit shift A and find a mix vector. And we want to mix this with zero. And the vector is going to be that displacement. There we go. Right, so now we actually have a nice rounded inner part and rounded outer part. That is looking quite beautiful. All right, so now we can actually start extruding this and I'm not gonna um, combine it with our original shape anymore. I'm just gonna work from here. We can actually press E, extrude this there, extrude this up like that, extrude this up like that, extrude this up like that. Beautiful, E, S, and F3, grid fill. That is looking better and this actually looks like a cool mushroom shape. Right? Quite beautiful. Now the reason this is not displacing is because we extruded the edge that was already part of our displacement group, our vertex group, which means that um, we don't actually have to assign this anymore. All right, let's scale this down a little bit and this as well. So everything gets a bit more tight, I suppose, and we can add another edge loop or let's double click on this edge and press Shift E. And just make this a bit more strong right this edge make it a bit stronger i suppose there we go that's looking quite interesting okay then let's just double click on this edge loop and let's move that back to actually move the entire object back to the left delete the old one here we go let's kill it down a little bit as well and then we can actually join this together and i'm going to join this with our cap Control j and let's actually set our entire stem in edit mode to remove from the displacement group or assign sorry assign that and let's just connect this double click and hold shift double click right mouse bridge edge loops where is it there it is and now we actually have a quite cool mushroom shape already right now of course i want some displacement in the mushroom cap as well and um, so we can actually do that in the modifiers why not we can add another displacement group hit plus and cap and we can just select the entire cap here, I suppose, to be our displacement group, assign. And then in here, we can add another set position, offset, noise texture, color, and let's uncheck to normalize and just scale this down a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot like that. 
and then we are going to find another mix node to duplicate that and the vector drag it out to a named attribute and this is going to be cap all right and we should invert that um so swap that in the b there we go that is looking quite cool so let's actually strengthen that down so find shift a a vector math set to scale and let's scale this down so it's not that strong of a displacement something like that that's looking quite cool so we actually have a fun little mushroom going on already now for the stem i do want a bit of displacement too so hit plus stem and select your entire stem up to here hit assign and um, so find another set position and we can duplicate this entire bunch set this to stem connect this in here and so let's play around let's add a bit more scaling in there and let's scale that down a bit more right something like that and that's looking quite beautiful right mouse shade smooth or let's just shift a set shade smooth in here beautiful all right so that is looking like an interesting kind of mushroom all right and what we can do now is hit shift a find an instance on points and shift a join geo connect this in here and we can actually um distribute some points shift a distribute points on faces and what this is going to do is we're going to add points on our mushroom and we're going to add instances on these points and i want an instance to be let's say an icosphere and then just scale this down like that and shift a transform geometry let's scale it down in the z direction completely and then i want my rotation here to be aligned to the normal right because i want my spheres to be pretty much um pointing out of the surface like they are pickles on a mushroom and we can do that by hitting the rotation into the rotation and usually that already aligns it properly beautiful now let's set this to be a poison disc and the reason why is because we can set a minimum distance so they won't intersect isn't that cool very cool and then I'm going to drag my selection out to a boolean. There we go. Boolean. No. Um, oh, sorry. To a random value is what I mean. A random value set to boolean. So we can also play around with the probability. And then we can connect the density max to like 50. Or maybe more. And set the distance min a bit lower to that. Now the scaling. I want this to be random. So drag it out to a random, ra random value. There we go. Now, I want this to have a spherical shape at least a little bit. Um, and the way to do that is we're going to be combining our X, Y, Z values. There we go. And I want my X and Y to always be the same value. So drag this out to a value, value, value. And set this to like 0.5 and the Y as well. And then I want the maximum here. Duplicate that as well for the maximum values. I want my maximum to be the same for the X and Y as well. And that's going to be like 0.7. There we go. And then I want my Z values. My minimum Z can be like 0.1. And my maximum can be about 0.5. So some of them are going to be thicker. Um, and some are going to be thinner. And we can perhaps even add more value to that max value. So it's really a more pointy kind of mushroom look. I quite like that. Um, so we can now just subdivide our icosphere or what we can do as well is just uh, delete that and add a cube and hit shift a find um, a subdivide um, surface there we go and we can set this to like two there we go and shift a set shade smooth beautiful amazing and then just scale that entire thing down slightly and let's set the maximum z value to one again something like that looks quite cool doesn't it now i want this to only spawn um on our cap or at least i want this to be yeah i only want this to spawn on our cap and we already have that a cap a vertex group so hit shift a and we can hit um named attribute set to cap of course and then we can connect our cap to our density factor there so then it's only going to be spawning these points on the cap because the um, the, the boolean here, the stem vertex, or sorry, the cap vertex group that we have, if we select that, we have a boolean that all these faces are set as one and the rest is zero, which means we can use that value of zero to one to set the density as well. 
right? Because, well, this is nothing else than a float number between 0 and 1, and that's exactly what we set with a Boolean as well, 0 or 1. All right, so that is looking quite cool. Now, let's start shading this a little bit. I suppose we do want to do that too. Um, so this here, the top is our mushroom. So hit Shift A, set the material, go to your material tab, hit new. So this is going to be mushroom and this is going to be mushroom. And then this, duplicate that, the bottom one here is going to be plus new material and call this speckles. And then this is going to be speckles. Then go to your shader editor, Go to your render. I'm going to set this at cycles and GPU. And let's just go into render view and see how, what we're working with for now. Right, so this looks quite cool. But I'm going to set an environment texture in my world tab. Set environment texture in the color. Hit open. Let's go to downloads. And um, that's where mine are located. And find an HDRI. If you don't have one, of course, download one from Polyaven, whatever. I'm going to set Whipple Creek Gazebo, one I use a lot. And let's hide the background in the render tab. Film transparent. There we go. And this point light, we don't actually need. So delete that um, just to get a more natural look. So this is our mushroom now. So let's start shading. And um, let's select our mushroom and go to the shader of mushroom first. Hit home. And let's actually start working out a shader. So I want my base color to be more of a brownish look. More brownish. Something like that. Maybe a bit more into orange vibes. Something like that. And of course I want my stem, my stem material to be a different color. And we can attribute that here too. Shift A attribute and find our stem here. And if we control shift click, we can see what that looks like. And we can use this to control a mix A and B. And we want this to be the factor. Connect this to the color. And then we can actually set our A color, our cap color to be the color we had before. Something like that perhaps, not sure yet. Maybe we just want to create a red mushroom. That's fine too, you know. You can create whatever type of mushroom you're looking for. Something like that. And then we can make our stem white, for example. Or a bit more yellow. I think they are more of a yellow-brownish tint. There we go. And then we can actually start adding a bit of texture, like normal maps. So let's hit Shift A and find a noise texture. There we go. And so let's set our factor to be a bump map of height, right? So noise texture factor is between 0 and 1. And the height map of the bump also takes a value of 0 and 1, a black and white mask. Connect this to the normal, and we're actually going to get a little bit of a normal map, right? So I want my initial normal to be quite, quite smooth and large, like that. But I want to add another one. So I'm going to drag this out, shift A, math, add another noise texture. And make this one a lot smaller for some micro details, I suppose. All right, add some roughness, add some detail, something like that. And we want this to be less strong than our original one. So we can actually hit Shift A, Math, set to multiply. And we can just lower the value of our micro details to something that feels more real and manageable, I guess. Something like that. That's looking quite nice. And then we can also play around with the roughness, right? Duplicate a noise texture. And let's connect the factor to the roughness, right? Shift A, color ramp. Color ramp, hello. What's happening? Color ramp. And we can actually control shift click on that to see what it looks like. And I want to have a bit of control between roughness values. Increase the roughness here and the detail a bit. There we go. And then I want this to be more of a rough material, which means that the glossy values, the black values, we need to set this a bit higher. So we crank this more to the whites and this one a tiny bit more to the blacks. There we go. Um, so Ctrl Shift click on that and this is how it looks. Then let's actually add a bit more randomization in this color. So copy this hex value of the red, drag it out to a noise texture, Shift A, find a mix node, mix color. And we just want to add this as a factor, which means that the noise texture is going to define where A and B are going to be placed. A is going to be a red, and B is going to be more of an orangey color. There we go. And then Shift A, find a color ramp. And where is this one coming from? I don't know. Delete. We can actually drag these values a tiny bit closer, so we actually play around more with different values here. 
And that's just going to add a bit more randomization of that color, which usually helps a lot to sell the look, you know, something like that. That looks quite cool. Maybe, maybe smoothen that out just slightly, though. Yeah, beautiful. So next up, I want to add a tiny bit of trans um, subsurface scattering, I suppose. Just drag that up a tiny bit. What we can do as well, if we want, is hit Shift A, find an edge shader. We can try to add a bit of translucency in here. But that's a little bit much. And um, we can set this color to be more towards the black values. Something like that. And then it's actually going to be more of the original color. If you set this to completely black, it has no translucency. Set this to completely white, it will have translucency. And um, so maybe if we do like a little tiny bit of that, we can add that. Right? Something like that. Beautiful. Now the inner side of this mushroom, we want to have a different kind of material as well. So hit Shift A, find a mix shader and add it before here. And we want the vector to be a named attribute or an attribute, sorry. And we want this to be set to the, what was it? Disp. Disp. There we go. And then we swap this into the second one and we drag the top one out to a principal BSDF. And we can now set this to be whatever we want. So a nice color for that inner part would be more of a white-ish color, I suppose. And I want this to be more rough. There we go. And I do want a nice noise texture for the bump. So we can actually add the same bump, I suppose. There we go. And let's see what looks better. Make this a bit darker, perhaps. And let's add a bit of subsurface there as well. And perhaps a bit of translucency between those as well. I know my shaders are now looking messy, but I will change that. There we go. And add shader translucent BSDF just to get a little bit of that shine through vibe. You know, I quite like that in plans and stuff. So we can add that ourselves. Why not? Let's see the color that we're picking for that though. Something like that. And that just adds a tiny little bit of that cool translucency. Isn't that nice? Now these pickles are a bit too wide in my opinion. So we can click on those and just set this to be a tiny little bit darker into the brown range as well. Crank up the roughness a little bit. And that's looking a bit better already. Okay. So let's say we also want some, some weirdness going on on its stem. We can go back to the Geometry Notes Editor. And we can find Shift A distribute points on faces. There we go. And we can actually distribute from the same mesh that we did for the original spickles. And now we can actually use the disp attribute as our density. And we can find an instance on points. And we can actually use the same instance we have here, right? So duplicate all of this and move it to the top, connect it to the instance there and join this up as well. Um, and now, of course, we need to switch this to Poison Disk and set this to be our density vector. Yeah, there we go. Um, so this and perhaps we need to also subtract the cap, right? That would make sense. Or actually, we can just set this to stem. What am I doing? Set this to stem. There we go. And scale the transform geometry. Scale this a bit up in the Z direction. Set everything to one. There we go. And find a bit more minimum distance. Like that, I guess. And then we can change the scale to be a random value. There we go. But set this to float. That means we're going to get an uniform scaling for our instance on points. And there we go. We can set this for like 0.3 to 0.6. There we go. And then we can just crank down this value a slight bit and set the material. Add a new material. Call this stem speckle and set that here. Shader editor. And let's make this a little bit darker. Why not? Play around with the values. Beautiful. Um, I think that looks interesting. Um, and maybe a bit too dark though. It has to blend in a tiny bit better. Something like... That, I suppose. And, well, there you go. You've got your own mushroom. Quite cool, isn't it? Um, 
So if you like this video, please leave a like, a comment, subscribe. We would enjoy any one of these. And please try to enjoy fall. It's a beautiful season. And we'll see you in the next one. Cheers.